I, Dr. Rohit Kokar, welcome you all on my personal behalf and on behalf of Vidya Prakashan Mandir Limited in today's event, Kutatka, a school virtual summit for principals and teachers. A virtual summit. Kuch karna hai to dat kar chala. Thoda dunia se hat kar chala. Leak par to sabhi chal lete hain. Kabhi itihas ko palat kar chala. Bina kaam ke mukam kaisa. Bina mehnat ke daam kaisa. Jab tak na hausla ho manzil, to raha mein aaram kaisa. Arjun ka nishana rak, man mein na koi bahana rak. Lakshya saamne hai, bas usi pe apna thikana rak. Soch mat saakar kar, apne karmo se pyaar kar. Milega duri mehnat ka phala, kisi aur ko na intazar kar. Jo chale the akele, unke piche aaj mele hai. Jo karte intazar nahi, unki zindagi mein aaj bhi jhamele hai. I take this proud privilege to welcome everyone, every educator with us, and especially our key speakers and panelists. I take proud privilege welcoming Madam Bharti Gandhi with us, who is a name which needs no introduction. She is a founder director, City Montessori School, Lucknow. I also welcome Madam Sunita Gandhi, daughter of Madam Gandhi, for today's valuable time. Ki Madam, you have taken time and with us. Abhi shortly, Professor Rajput will join with us and uh, will also join by our own Pathak sir, our next key speaker. I also welcome our panelists uh, today who have taken out a time, Madam Lata Vidya Nathan, uh, which is again a name into education interest. Ma'am, welcome. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Ki aapne time diya. I welcome Madam Aluwalia, Madam uh, Madhu Aluwalia who is a senior advisor in NABIT and Quality Council of India, New Delhi. I also welcome Mr. Sudhanshu Shekhar, who is a national awardee principal of KL International School with us. So welcome once again, everyone on the panel. Before starting, I would like to introduce our organization and our line. Ashan Mande Private Limited is a leading publisher, Pan India, in the field of education for over 40 years with a successful track record of quality publication of children books and has been positioned as a pioneer in quality of content and publication domain. It has been honored with a numerous award to include national award by the honorable former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam in 2005. The inevitability of drastic changes in education system is now clear to everyone. And learning would never be the same in post corona. After lockdown are lifted nationally and internationally, change shall always be resisted by reluctant, gradually accepted by lethargic, and enthusiastically appreciated by the innovators and entrepreneurs. Change will come anyway, overcoming all impediments. There is a silence in the education world due to the direct or a classroom communication gap between the students and teachers. Dialogue is the real force of education. उसी काम को करने के लिए आज की परिचर्चा का हम लोगों ने जो है आयोजन किया है और मैं पुनः आप सब लोगों का वंदन करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं और आज के कार्यक्रम में स्वागत करता हूं प्रोफेसर राजपूत हैज आल्सो कम और उन्होंने भी So, how should I do it? I just speak as well. Except that.
Random has name has become a synonymous with City Montessori School. Her sincere devotion towards the education of her children, training of teachers, upliftment of women, education of social levels is recognized everywhere, and she is respected by everyone for the same. Dr. Gandhi is quite an original thinker, and CMS has greatly benefited from her hard and dedicated services. Her innovative ideas and fresh thinking on education have influenced not only CMS but many schools nationwide. Her life has been one of the dedication to the services of children and women's welfare, and she continues this task undeterred by any obstacle. She has a tremendous zeal for life. Even after 53 years of services to City Montessori School as its founder director, she spares no effort to make. constant improvements in cms providing wholesome education to its the students ma'am bahut bahut dhanyawad aapka ki aaj aapne hum logo ke liye samay nikala now i would going to introduce our panelists madam lata vidyanathan uh, to our audiences madam lata vidyanathan is a veteran educationist her illustrious career spans 3 and a half decades she is a former principal bharatiya vidya bhavan school chandigarh the founder principal of atter school at parmanu and the principal of modern school parakhamba road new delhi for last 14 years and several other assignments she has been honored with national award to teachers in year 2003 by president of india she is also the recipient of numerous awards including the dr radha krishnan award bharat shiromani award madhav gaurav ratna achieve award and many more ma'am welcome to the panel please आपने बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपने कि आप ज्वाइन किए अपने सेकंड पैनलिस्ट में अपने ऑडियंस का इंट्रोडक्शन करा देता हूं मैम मधु अलूवालिया शी इज वर्किंग एज अ सीनियर एडवाइजर एज आई टोल्ड इन क्वालिटी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया अ ट्रेनिंग इन द एजुकेशन मैनेजमेंट प्रोफेशनल ओवर ट्वेंटी एट ईयर्स मल्टी फंक्शनल एक्सपीरियंस इन द आई एजुकेशन इंडस्ट्री इंक्लूडिंग ट्वेल्व ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस विद एन मैनेजिंग अकेडमिक ऑपरेशन इन लार्ज बिजनेस एरिया extensively madam is experience in educational delivery system management product management profit center management and many more ma'am please welcome welcome for your uh, to pari charcha now i would go to introduce our next panelist mr sudhanshu shekhar he is an innovative educationist with 22 years of rich experience especially in the staff training motivation and recruitment he is also ex chairman merit school sahodya and has wrong a clerkish career in teaching counseling training and administration and he also conferred with several awards out of which cbse award by 2015 ex rt minister smriti rani welcome sir welcome now we start with our session ma'am all to you jo pehla session aaj ke paricharcha karyakram ka hoga isko hum logo ne teen sessions mein baanta hai depending upon our um, uh, attendees today जो पहला सेशन है वो सेशन है चैलेंजेस एंड सॉल्यूशंस टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग पोस्ट कोरोना तो इसके अंदर मैं एक एक क्वेश्चन जो अटेंडीज पूछना चाहते हैं वो आपसे पूछूंगा और सभी लोग उसको सुनेंगे एंड विल बी बेनिफिटेड विद इट तो माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू डॉक्टर लता विद्यानाथन मैम इज मैम स्कूल टेक राइजिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ एडवांसिंग एडुकेशन एंड राइज ऑफ ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग आज के समय में इसकी प्रासंगिकता क्या है ओवर टू यू मैम Uh, आपको मेरी आवाज आ रही है ठीक से मैम यू आर ऑडिबल कैन यू हियर मी यस मैम ऑल राइट थैंक यू प्रोफेसर राजपूत नमस्ते नमस्ते आपको एंड मिसेस गांधी नमस्ते हाँ आ गई आवाज आवाज आई माय वेरी रेस्पेक्टफुल ग्रीटिंग्स टू बोथ ऑफ यू पर्टिकुलरली सिंस यू बीन अ सीनियर इन द प्रोफेशन एंड एक्सट्रीमली extremely valuable for the learnings we have had uh, and of course to all the other panelists some whom i know well and some whom i don't but it's such an honor and privilege to know each one of you and thank you for this opportunity a uh, very interesting question the first one is that um, and please time me out because we are all die hard teachers you can enough. always say okay enough zarur bol dijiyega राह में आराम कैसा आइए जी राह में आराम कैसा ही अभी आपसे अभी ही सुना है तो इसी को लेकर मैं स्टार्ट करना चाहूंगी 
uh, the process of advancing education and the rise of blended learning. You know, it's been very interesting. March 22nd, and today it's 100 plus days. Everything went off. Travel, tourism, all kinds of economic act activity, everything shut down. What even schools shut down, but what did not shut down is the educational warriors' jobs. That is the going on of education, as in learning, academics, and the teachers' jobs. It is remarkable to note how it took less than 24 hours for, for the institutions and teachers to cut terms with what had happened. It was a shift, an unprecedented one that we have witnessed. So with this situation, we really needed to understand what would we would do with people. And apparently, I could see as an educator and as a student of learning that there are these three areas. You have the pedagogy, you have the curriculum, and you have the technology, which will need to be blended in order that the learning continues. Technology has only been a medium. It is an enabler. And therefore, since the schools closed down and children and others could not leave home, including teachers, this shift had to happen. It happened at such an express rate that in spite of all the smart classes and the kind of technology enabled learning that was happening within the classrooms, with modified, refined plans, policies, strategies in place, yet this shift was not as if it was compelled. Because when there is face-to-face -face learning, the technology tool comes in as an assistance and it not become central to the process of learning, except that it enabled learning or enhanced learning. Now, some schools within a week just stopped all kinds of uh, dealing with students and trained their teachers. Others trained their teachers and kept the learning going. They were still under the category of schools in which the enabling was really fast and quick and they were used to it and therefore there was no trouble in the shift. Basically, we have to understand that this is the way forward and there's no choice. Blended learning would be only uh, the choice ahead of us. So what exactly is blended learning that we are looking at? It is a thoughtful integration of face-to-face -face learning experiences with online learning. Now, I need to divide this into two parts. One, what is it that online learning provides for? And second, what is the way of learning? What is the pedagogy of learning? What was required to be done in order to make this a meaningful and a learning experience for children. So here came the situation. Soon we realized that not all was hunky-dory. Soon we realized that not all teachers were trained. And therefore, the training process had to begin hand in hand with the execution. And there we started hearing the new language, zoom in. We started hearing the language of Microsoft Teams a little more louder than when those people came to train us. We started listening to the Google Suite and the Google Classrooms. We started listening to WebEx Cisco. I mean, I think the whole, all these platforms suddenly began to make meaning as a process, as a medium for instructing children or helping children learn. So that was only a tooling. Now comes the aspect for teacher, for schools where the challenge was there as to whether Everyone and everyone has the ability to be able to sit at home and learn with the technology tool in place. It is not a surprise, and neither do I know the statistics in detail to say that this is a completely digital divide situation. And so, the digital divide, despite the fact that people didn't have it, Private schools were able to easily move on to that sector. A lot of governments made the effort. The national government came in to help us with Diksha and Swam and so many other platforms through which 
a, this kind of transaction could take place. But I think in the next few minutes, I want to just focus on the phrase that you have wanted me to discuss, which is blended learning. And I want to say that this, because we call it a thoughtful integration of face to face with the learning environment, soon with the learning experience, along with online learning, we soon realized that if such a situation arises where this will someday end and people will have to go back to their schools or partially go back to their schools, then the new normal would actually bank upon the blended ways of learning. So what is this? You know, I know that a webinar of in, in a panel discussion, it's not possible to get into the very details of what blended learning entails. But I'll still put it in three small areas. One is the transaction. One is the technology support. And of course, we'll probably talk about it a little later, is the way to know that learning has actually happened. So we soon realized that it is while technology is a tool and we need the learning management systems in place, we need the contentment learning systems in place, we need to have an interactive uh, tool available at home and at school or in the homes of teachers from where this transaction has to happen. Then came the belief that whatever happens now, it is an online way. And when the school reopens, probably the new normal will be called blended. Because of the hygiene associated with this pandemic, it is 100% sure that not all 40 children can sit in class. Not all of them can come to school. Not all of them can sit eight hours in front of a machine and have an increased screen time depending upon the age groups of children from kindergarten to primary through secondary and the senior secondary. So each one of these areas have their distinct requirement and the, and the necessity to look at it very carefully. And I think this is all being evolved. Learning is happening uh, uh, along with the transaction that's already happening. And therefore, the minimum understanding of blended learning to be, to be said in very few words is that there'll be days when there'll be face-to-face -face learning with the teacher, within the classroom, in an enclosed space with limited number of children and part of the lesson going that way. And the other part, which will be almost like uh, exactly as it is happening during this lockdown, which will be of different kinds. However, blended learning is not the online part of the blended learning should never be mistaken for just a shift from face-to-face -face learning to that of a screen or through that of the use of a platform. If we examine the hundred ways in which technology has enabled, whether it's, a, whether it's um, emails, whether it is uh, uh, WhatsApp, whether it is on telephones, whether it is through their educational portals within schools, all these processes have learned and have actually converged in understanding, a better understanding of what this is. But if we go into details of what is blended learning in particular, I think to put it that Miley is an asynchronous way of learning where I think the different methodologies or pedagogies involved would include station rotation, lab rotation, individual rotation, flipped learning. I think there are a whole flexible learning. There are a whole lot of ways in which blended learning can actually take place with, again, two two something nice and something not too nice about it. One is the goodness of it is suddenly the child finds himself not in a classroom, but as if it is just personalized for him. So there's an element of personalized learning. There is an element of uh, free time learning. It almost feels like round the clock learning. It's also sometimes in some areas, it feels as if it's cost effective on one side and no footprint on the other. And when it comes to the losses involved in this, I think one is very clear that there is too much of technology. There is wastage of technology. There is often resistance and emotional distress in this. And to state it briefly, that while all of this is going to be challenging us over the next six months to find ways and means of absolute order in this, and we are not as educators speaking for our private schools where all of this is kind of moving seamlessly. But I think the whole transition of human beings into this digital citizenry, which they have to learn, 
a social emotional balances which has to happen but too much of empathy that we need to actually design this whole work again for making sure that the last mile the last child is also learning, learning. i think the challenges are a lot so with this few introductory remarks on what i think is a very um, very floating image of what blended learning is or what the transition is all about i like to hand it over to the next speaker thank you ma'am thank you very much and this is the what exactly we everybody is expecting ki madam jab shuru karenge to ek picture ke tarah se wo shuru hoga abstract ke waise and people have very well idea of this term ki blended learning kya hai thank you very much ma'am thank you very much thank you. and yeah. uh, i welcome our principal sudhanshu sir also who uh, is with us now our uh, one of the panelists now second question is to madhu ma'am in the continuation of the same bahut logo ko ye malum hoga ki qci quality council of india jo hai wo accreditation process of the schools mein bhi adjust hain to madam logo ne ek research kiya hai qci ne ek research kiya hai jo 700 se zyada school mein live cheeze puch kar ki aaj expectations kya hain what are the expectations of the schools teachers yeah. students and parents during this covid 19 and post it so none other than madam madhu aluwalia is the perfect person who can educate us and who can share that experience ki what are the actual expectations over to you ma'am all right uh, good afternoon everyone good afternoon rajput sir and my fellow uh, uh, panelist uh, uh, rohit sir it's not a research uh you very rightly said that quality council of india's main mandate is to do assessment and accreditation in various spheres of a life manufacturing services schools early childhood higher education so we are a national body which conducts assessment and accreditation across now i am representing nabet which is a vertical and a board of uh, national of qci whose main mandate is to bring quality in every sphere of life of education which is whether it's a student uh, learning or teacher assessment or school assessment so in that capacity uh, we had conducted a small perception survey in the month of may where we interacted with principals uh, of uh, delhi ncr schools uh, government private both online web and we had designed the survey where we interacted with principals parents students students specifically of 8th 9th and 10th and uh, and teachers so uh, i wish i had the time i'll share the survey with everybody but there are certain highlights the question says what are expectations of principals teachers students and parents so in our survey i had I, i'm going to talk about certain highlights that when we uh, when lata madam said that you know very uh, everybody very effortlessly shifted to online teaching it was really heartening to see that you know all government schools because we conduct project with government schools also they all had shifted to online learning so uh, in my survey also with what we conducted 85 to 90% of the schools whether they are government or private they shifted to online within a weeks time within weeks or 10 days time uh, their ex expectations now uh, particularly about uh, from a principal or a school uh, are um, that you know there is not an enough infrastructure now when the schools reopen right now teachers are conducting sessions from home so they have internet bandwidth and they can you know interact uh, with students they do not have any other work to do in the sense a uh, school work so they can devote time in creating content etc so uh, there is not a problem for, for infra of infrastructure but uh, in schools uh, they are not equipped with you know uh, huge bandwidth and infrastructure so their top most issue which is you know private principal is facing or private school is facing is that um, the infrastructure uh, the fees and the uh, syllabi the syllabi has to be uh, reduced so these are the three main uh, concerns which principal shared top three concerns and a government school shared the internet bandwidth infrastructure and the syllabi so syllabi is a common thing amongst both of them now if i go to teachers all the teachers because we conduct assessments we know that teachers uh, 
a struggle in ICT uh, involvement in their uh, pedagogy. But here teachers have started teaching through uh, WhatsApp, email, or any other you know platform. The major problem teachers are facing right now is how to create a content digitally because they are so used to chalk and talk method. They've been used to creating lesson plans and you know uh, teaching students face to face. So here the content, uh, online content has to be completely different, which can engage students. So that's their major struggle that they're struggling on how to create a content. So 57% of the teachers are uh, have given this uh, feeler to us that they are struggling on how to make the right kind of content. Uh, also, most of the teachers, around 26% of the teachers, whether they are from private or a government, they do not know most of the government initiatives like Swayam, Diksha, or how to make use of those you know, initiatives. So that is another thing which they do not know because we checked it out. And the last one is which platform to use, how to maximize, how to utilize that platform to the fullest. Attendance, engagement with the student, assessment of a student, summative, formative, those are the struggling point of a teacher because teacher is the most, teacher is the person who's getting most affected by this entire thing because her objective, we, we have to understand this, that all teachers are very, very passionately working towards it. They want to deliver the best, but if they are unable to do it, that's the problem they are facing. So those are the teachers' views. As far as parents are concerned, now parents, the major concern is that, you know, um, children screen time, eyes training, uh, engagement of the children uh, concentration span is very low and uh, the queries are not getting resolved. 80% uh, of the parents said that their children have shifted online, but uh, they also said it has increased the financial burden to them. So their expectation is that in case uh, the internet can be um, um, made subsidized or uh, the lesson plans or the classes teachers can make it more effectively. Uh, they also prefer blended learning. They said 100% online is not going to work. They prefer blended learning. Now, if uh, also some parents, uh, uh, you know, um, complained about mental well-being getting affected, children's mental well-being getting affected. So that's another concern which, you know, came up very well. As far as students are concerned, now their expectation is that it has to be a blended learning. Digital divide, people who do not have laptops or uh, you know, students who do not have mobiles, dedicated mobiles to them, or their parents are unable to you know, get those kind of things. So their expectation is that if school can provide them with some kind of you know help on mobiles or laptops or uh, you know some kind of a, a free medium through which they can acquire so you can understand this perception survey was conducted um, only for delhi ncr where there are high end schools high end private schools now if we look at you know places like uh, you know interiors of orissa or rajasthan or haryana you can understand how the parents uh, must be feeling and how the children must be feeling. So their expectations we have to really, really look into. We have to really, as ma'am said, that blended learning is the need of an hour. We have to look into it, how the blended learning can be conducted, how each child who is unable to uh, get them, because we say that, you know, uh, RD says that every child has to acquire the knowledge. So how to reach out to those things? All these uh, uh, extra marks and those uh, private vendors, they all are catering to private, upper private schools. But what happened to government schools or migrant children from Delhi or from any other state, they have migrated. So their expectation is that, you know, some uh, free medium like TV or radio can be made very, very efficient so that they can acquire knowledge. Also, it has to be a very, very user friendly. So um, uh, it should be, it should not be very complicated, should be available freely, should be user friendly, should be engaging. 
so that is uh, the the entire survey uh, crux was all about rohit uh, thank you ma'am thank you very much because aapne bilkul wo ground check kiya hai और वो ग्राउंड चेक करने के बाद जो एक्सपेक्टेशंस निकल कर आई हैं हर उस पर्सन की स्टेक होल्डर की जो एजुकेशन से जुड़ा है आई एम श्योर कि इट इज रिलेवेंट पॉइंट टू गेट थ्रू इट एंड टू टेक अ नोट ऑफ दीज थिंग्स थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच नाउ मूविंग फर्दर आई एम गोइंग टू आर नेक्स्ट पैनलिस्ट एंड दिस इज अ लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ सेशन वन एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट सुधांशु सर टू बी अ बाई फॉर दिस बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द टीचर्स आर राइटिंग अस कि हिंदी में भी थोड़ा थोड़ा सा टीचर्स कुछ बोल दे सो सुधांशु सर अ वेरी हार्ड क्वेश्चन इज कमिंग टू यू कि नो स्कूल नो फी आजकल टीवी मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया में ये फ्रेज बहुत चल रहा है स्प्रेडिंग ऑल ओवर सोशल मीडिया एंड प्रिंट मीडिया वॉट शुड बी द स्कूल टेक टू आइस ब्रेक दिस विद पेरेंट्स कैसे पेरेंट्स और स्कूल्स को एक साथ पिच पर आना है कि भाई नो स्कूल नो फी शुड नॉट बी अ फ्रेज दे शुड रियली वैल्यू the teachers who are putting 24 cross 7 efforts in learning over to you sir sir unmute yourself sudhanshu sir unmute yourself am i audible yes sir you are audible sir uh good evening rajput sir uh, vedanathan madam and uh, bharti kanti madam perhaps all these days when a principal is planning for academics and uh, digital learning and all other things about assessments you are putting me a question of uh, no school no fee yeah. so a very difficult question i like to share only some points as a principal and i'll put some data before you those who are listening uh, and they are only to think and rethink how we have to move ahead uh, the data says we have more than 5 lakh private schools in the country and uh, there is a huge economic crisis in front of all the private schools here private schools are uh, purely giving quality education to students and uh, they have uh, developed a trust made a trust in the society in all these years and when we talk about these five lakh schools and uh, giving quality education we have to see that uh, the livelihood of more than 2 crore teaching and non teaching staff is dependent on these schools so a simple data but it tells a lot of things when i think uh, a little more i find there are uh, elite schools and then we think of some budget schools the crisis in front of all the schools and when we think of a crisis the crisis of salary mostly dependent and we are mostly depending on the school fee for this matter now uh, if we see the schools of up we have been given a government order that uh, you cannot collect three months fees not the quarterly fee the second one is you have to collect only one month fee the third point is no transport fee the fourth is no hike in the fee so we have to take up these instructions from the government so the fees of last year no change in the fee structure we have to take it monthly we cannot collect it quarterly then we have to see the other side of the data where the school has to incur the cost where overhead cost is there insurance is there repair maintenance loans interest bills salary and lot many other things are there the first line no school schools are there schools are there and schools will be there now we have to think and i find this is my personal opinion we are fighting with some disinformation and with some misinformation i feel the schools and the parents we have to see it very carefully when the schools are giving the clear instructions which are sent by governments like giving one month fee it is taken in a different way now any government order which is coming to schools it has to be informed to the parents and the information mode is only sms by which schools will inform now there is a on a lighter note some years before it is said the education sector it is considered a recession proof sector everybody used to think there will be no recession in the education sector but it is not spared by the current covid crisis so we have to understand that schools are committed totally committed to complete syllabus so that children they do not suffer their their year particularly this academic year is not wasted 
I also find that parents, those uh, parents who are, who, are, who are having difficult times, who are uh, finding it difficult to pay, how they are going to pay the cumulative fees at one point of time, they have to pay the cumulative fees when the schools will reopen. So paying the cumulative fees is going to be very difficult for them. So government has given them an option to pay monthly fee. So at this point of time, what I feel, the teachers and the school, they have to connect to the child. They have to connect to all the parents of the school. And the one mission is to help, not to worry. Difficult times are there. Now, parents are not paying the fee. I think there is a hope. And I don't know how that hope is created. The hope is that the state government will give a fee waiver. So that is one point where everybody is thinking, let us not pay the fee. The parents are confused also that whether to pay the fee or not. And there is no clarity among parents because parents have assumed no fee for this period. On a lighter note, I do feel that no government department or no private department has stopped asking or taking payments. If I give some examples, electricity bills, urban development tax, water, telephone, ESI, PF, DDS, insurance, buses, anything. No department has waived any amount of the expenses, all to be paid in spite of this COVID. So we have to think, we have to rethink what the government, is, government sector is doing and what the private sector is doing and what the schools have to do. So we have to understand our responsibility. At the same time, we have to think how many parents who are capable of paying the fee? How many parents who are capable, why they are not paying? Okay, there are some parents who cannot pay. Difficult times, we have to think about them. But if majority of the payments, uh, majority of the payments are coming, so we can manage the schools in a wonderful way. Otherwise, some of the budget schools, even they will have a lot of difficult times in the coming days. So my one point is, teachers, school, they have to connect to child as well as parents in these difficult times. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And this is more on the responsibility you had. You had a lot of questions, sir. And you had a lot of parents who told you that if are responsible, so they have to come and to understand the dynamics at the school side. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now the first session is complete, which was our panelist's first session. Tha. And uh, now we are going to take the honor of Madam Bharti Gandhi, who has a very, very long experience. And uh, we are also happy that uh, Madam uh, Junior Gandhi, Sunita Gandhi Ma'am, who is uh, also a very educationist and having a vast experience in education. She is a founder of Global Education and Training Institute in India also. She had also joined and gave us a time. Now, uh, you people should educate all of us ki in this scenario, how to go, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Uh. It's a second button on the screen. Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you very much. First of all, I must thank all the speakers. This is Padma uh, Shri, no, I'm sorry, Lata Vedanathan ji, and Madam Madhu Aluwalia ji, and Mr. Uh, Sudhan Shu Shekhar ji. Bhot acha bola aap logo ne, hume enlighten kiya. Ab mein uh, Shri Saurabh Jain ji ko, jinho ne initiative uthaya hai, और उनके मॉडरेटर मिस्टर रोहित खोकर जी को जिन्होंने हमको फसाया है <laughs> बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देती हूँ क्योंकि हम लोग टीचर तो हमें तो बोलने की आदत है ही है ना <laughs> तो जब तक कि आप लिमिट नहीं करते हम लोग बोलते ही जाते हैं तो हमें ये निवेदन करना है कि ये जो कोविड का टाइम आया इसमें बच्चों को बहुत ज्यादा विशेष रूप से घरों में रहना पड़ा और 
एक तो अच्छी बात ये रही कि उनको पेरेंट्स का सानिध्य मिला और टीचर्स बहुत ज्यादा सामने आए खास तौर से हमारे सिटी मॉन्सरी के स्कूल के बच्चों ने बिड़ा उठाया कि हम प्रत्येक बच्चे को पढ़ाएंगे और हर क्लास को पढ़ाएंगे और पूरा पूरा टाइम टेबल उनको पढ़ाने की कोशिश की और बच्चे तो न केवल रिजल्ट मिला बल्कि उनको इम्तहान भी देने का मौका नहीं मिला बहुत कुछ उनको नुकसान उठा उठाना पड़ा पढ़ाई में और आ, हमारे जो गरीब बच्चे हैं उनको इस मोबाइल की एजुकेशन का कोविड के समय में बहुत कुछ ज्यादा लाभ नहीं प्राप्त हो सका क्योंकि उनके पास अच्छे वाले एप्स नहीं थे उन्होंने हिम्मत नहीं हारी और बच्चों ने इस कोविड के टाइम में घुटने नहीं टेके और ज्यादा खुशी की बात यह है कि कोई भी बच्चे को मौत का सामना की कोई कैजुअलिटी हुई बड़ों की हुई तो अब हमें सोचना है कि कोविड तो अब चला ही जाएगा चाहे एक महीने में जाए चाहे चार महीने में जाए उसके बाद स्कूल खुलेंगे और बच्चों को पढ़ने के लिए खुशी का एक माहौल मिलेगा खेल कूद कर सकेंगे बाहर जा सकेंगे और म्यूजिक सीख सकेंगे ये सब कुछ कर सकेंगे लेकिन सवाल इस बात का है कि ये कब खुलेंगे स्कूल स्कूलों का सवाल है हमारे पास में बहुत कुछ कठिनाइयां हैं पेरेंट्स की भी बहुत कुछ कठिनाइयां हैं पेरेंट्स जो है वो कोशिश करते हैं कि हम अपने बच्चों को स्कूल में पढ़ाएं लेकिन जो फीस लेने वाले स्कूल हैं उनके सामने और पेरेंट्स के सामने दोनों के सामने एक बहुत बड़ा एक चैलेंज है पेरेंट्स के पास जिनके पास फीस है वो तो देंगे ही इसमें कोई शक नहीं है लेकिन हम लोगों ने यह किया है कि जिनके पेरेंट्स के पास में फीस की दिक्कत है उनको हमने टेन परसेंट ट्वेंटी फीस माफी का फायदा दे दिया है और हमारी पढ़ाई अभी भी पहली तारीख से बिल्कुल टाइम टेबल बना करके प्री प्राइमरी की प्राइमरी की जूनियर की हाई स्कूल की इंटर की बाकायदा चल रही है शाम को उनके हॉबी क्लासेस भी हम चला रहे हैं जिसमें कि उनको म्यूजिक का और योगा का और इस तरह जो भी हम करा सकते हैं उसका हम उन्हें पूरा फायदा दे रहे हैं शाम को क्लासेस में की तो ये सब प्रोग्राम चल रहे हैं लेकिन भगवान की कृपा होगी तो स्कूल खुलेंगे और बच्चों को पूरा फायदा मिलेगा और पेरेंट्स भी जो अपनी उनकी औकात है जो उनकी अपनी फाइनेंशियल कंडीशन है उससे पेट काट करके भी वो बच्चों की फीस देते हैं ताकि वो बच्चों को पढ़ा सकें हम उन पेरेंट्स के बहुत आभारी हैं क्योंकि ये स्कूल उन्हीं के द्वारा फाइनेंस्ड है हम लोगों की जो भी फाइनेंस है वो पेरेंट्स से ही आती है इसके अलावा जो बजट स्कूल्स हैं उनकी भी फाइनेंस पेरेंट्स से ही आती है लेकिन वो जो गांव में स्कूल हैं जिनको कि गवर्नमेंट चलाती है उसमें टीचर्स के वेतन की कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लेकिन उनके भी अपने चैलेंजेस हैं भगवान करेगा सब सफल होंगे सब ठीक होंगे अच्छा समय आएगा और बच्चे अच्छी प्रकार से पढ़ सकेंगे हम लोगों का तीनों का मैंने माता पिता और टीचर्स तीनों का एक ही मकसद है कि हम बच्चों को अच्छे से अच्छा बनाए महान नागरिक बनाए विश्व नागरिक बनाए सारी दुनिया में रोटी कपड़ा मकान शिक्षा और अस्पताल सारे दुनिया के बच्चों को प्राप्त हो सारे दुनिया के लोगों को प्राप्त हो इसके लिए अच्छी शिक्षा देने की हमें जरूरत है उसका हमारा प्रयास है और आपने जो ये सेमिनार आयोजित किया है इसके लिए हम आपके बहुत आभारी हैं और महान शिक्षाविदों के जो महान से महानतर हैं लता वैद्यनाथन है मधु अलूवालिया हैं और भी महान से महान ओपी पाठक जी हैं तमाम लोग हैं हमारे जो हम जो कि हमारे मिस्टर ओ पाठक जी हैं आई एस है उन्होंने अपना आई एस का पद त्याग करके भी स्कूलों का संचालन किया है पद्मश्री प्रोफेसर जय एस राजपूत है फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर ऑफ एन सी आर टी है इनको सुनने का मौका मिला सुधांशी जी को सुनने का मौका मिला ऐसा 
मौका हमें कब मिला मिलेगा इसको मौका दिलाने वालों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू मैम अब सुनीता जी जी मेरी बात को आगे बढ़ो जी 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 सुनीता गांधी जी खुद में एक बहुत बड़ी विशेषक है वर्ल्ड बैंक में ये वो थी इकोनॉमिस्ट इकोनॉमिस्ट थी और इनका सिलेक्शन हुआ था पांच हजार में से पच्चीस लोग लिए गए थे उनमें से एक ये हैं और इन्हें वर्ल्ड बैंक में प्रेसिडेंट अवार्ड भी मिला था और वहां पर भी इन्होंने शिक्षा का ही काम किया मेरी सारी प्रेरणा मुझे मिलती है एक एजुकेशन हाउस जिससे मैं एसोसिएटेड रही हूँ बचपन से वो है मम्मी पापा के प्रांगण में ही हमने सब सीखा है और विदेश जाके भी मैं छब्बीस साल रही लेकिन रियली वापस आके बहुत कुछ सीखने को मम्मी पापा से मिल रहा है तो मैं आई एम ग्रेटफुल कि मम्मी ने मुझसे कहा अभी थोड़ी देर पहले कि आप प्लीज मेरे साथ ज्वाइन कर लो तो आई एम हियर इन सपोर्ट ऑफ हर आई डोंट हैव टू से लॉट बिकॉज ऑल दीज वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटर्स आई हियर यू नो विद इयर्स ऑफ सर्विस इयर्स ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ द एजुकेशन फील्ड आई थिंक इट्स रियली नाइस कि विद्या प्रकाशन ने ये एक बहुत बड़ा फोरम क्रिएट किया है एजुकेशन के ऊपर वार्तालाप बहुत ज्यादा होनी चाहिए क्योंकि बहुत ज्यादा कंफ्यूजन है इस समय यू नो एजुकेशन को जो स्तर मिलना चाहिए सोसाइटी में वो नहीं मिल रहा है बहुत पैसों में तोला जा रहा है और ये बहुत गलत हो रहा है तो इसमें हम सबको एक साथ मिलजुल के बहुत सारे मोर्चों पे एक साथ काम करना है और हम आप लोग के सबके साथ हैं ऑफकोर्स हम आप सबसे प्रेरणा भी लेते रहेंगे आ, बस ये कहना है जो मैडम ने सबसे पहले हमसे कहा लता जी ने हम लोग को संबोधित करके कि ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग एक न्यू नॉर्मल है जो इस पर सबको आना है तो उसके क्या क्या चैलेंजेस हैं क्या क्या अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ हैं उन्होंने बहुत अच्छी तरह से बहुत सारे इसके परस्पेक्टिव दिए साथ में कहना चाहूंगी कि भाई इससे लगता है मुझे वर्ल्ड बैंक का व्यू अगर लें तो एक्सेस बच्चों को जो गैप है लर्निंग गैप बिटवीन द रिच एंड द पुअर द अर्बन एंड द रूरल डिवाइड कि ये सारी चीजें जो है वो वाकई में हम फुलफिल कर सकते हैं इस टेक्नोलॉजी के थ्रू तो केवल एक चीज संक्षेप में मैं कहना चाहूंगी वन डिवाइस वन चाइल्ड आई थिंक दैट्स द फोकस वी शुड हैव कि हर बच्चे के हाथ में कम से कम एक डिवाइस हो हम लोग बहुत डरते थे उनको मोबाइल देने में कि क्या क्या गलत सीखेंगे बच्चे लोग लेकिन एक नीड बन गई है और बच्चों को देना बहुत जरूरी है और जब तक उनके पास वो डिवाइस नहीं होगा इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी नहीं होगी एडिकुट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जो नेसेसरी है उस कनेक्टिविटी को देने के लिए या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ये डिवाइस देने के लिए वो बहुत ही असेंशियल है उसके बगैर हम इंडिया को लिटरेट नहीं कर पाएंगे इंडिया को उसके आगे जो लिटरेसी के आगे जो पढ़ाई है वो भी इतनी इफेक्टिवली नहीं कर पाएंगे टाइम आ गया है बेस्ट एजुकेटर्स को बच्चों से जोड़ने का और वो ऑनलाइन टूल्स के अलावा हम लोग नहीं कर सकते इसके साथ मैं आपसे धन्यवाद देती हूँ बहुत बहुत थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम थैंक यू मैम गांधी की आपने अपना आशीर्वाद हम लोगों को दिया इसी के साथ पहला सेशन हम लोग कंक्लूड करते हैं कंक्लूडिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को बढ़ाना ही होगा इट इज अड ऑफ द आवर एंड हाउ इट हैज टू बी देर अभी आने वाले सेशंस में और सारे स्पीकर्स उस पर प्रकाश डालेंगे एंड ये पक्का है कि हम लोगों को थोड़ा ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग या टेक्नोलॉजी की तरफ को स्विफ्ट तो करना ही होगा एजुकेशन को दिस इज वन थिंग विच हैज कम आउट वेरी वेल इनटू अ सेशन वन एंड विद्या प्रकाशन मंदिर प्राइवेट लिमिटेड ज्ञान का सागर